Bubble gives you basic pagination features for working with lists, but what if you're working with a really large data set and you need more control, like letting users choose how many items they see per page or jump to a specific page, and having this all work efficiently and at scale? In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to build a custom pagination feature in your Bubble app that works for both repeating groups and tables. That way you have full control over page size, navigation, and performance. Let's take a look. In our example, we're going to be paging through a list of 250 countries, and we're going to give the user a few different ways to move through this list so it's convenient for them. The first thing is that they can decide how many countries they want to see per page. So right now we're on page one, and we're seeing five items at a time. I can change this to 10, it'll add five more, 25, right, and so on. And I also have control over the options that we see in this dropdown. I'm going to bring this back down to five for a second. The user can also navigate through the pages. They can click on the next button, right? Now we're on page two, next again, page three. We can see this uh, value right here is changing as I click on next, or if I go backwards, previous, right? This is going one page at a time. I can also jump around to a specific page. So I know that with five items per page, there are 50 pages total. So let's say I wanna jump all the way to page 40. Okay, so it'll take me right there. I can also jump back to the very first page for quick access or to the very last page just some convenience buttons for the user. Now, notice that if I change the number of items per page, let's say 50 per page, and I go back to the bottom here, I have less pages, of course, because I can show more at one time. And so this is responding dynamically to the number of items per page. So if I go to page three, you can see here, we are looking at items 101 to 150. So this kind of indicator as well is something that you can do to help the user understand where they are in the list overall. Jumping into the editor, we're gonna start with the data source for my repeating group here. Now keep in mind that everything I'm doing here to manage the pagination can also be applied to a table element the exact same way. I'm actually not using the built-in properties that Bubble has for repeating groups to work with pages. I'm gonna be using my own system using custom states. But notice here with the repeating group, I do have this set fixed number of rows setting disabled. I need to have flexibility over the number of rows that show at any given time because I'm giving my user the ability to change change that, right? They may want to see five at a time, 10 at a time, whatever they want to select here. So all of this, we're going to be working with custom states. We're going to be referencing some of our inputs here. Um, we're going to be triggering some workflows to update things as the user moves through. You can do all of the same things with table elements as well. Okay. Now, in my case, I'm pulling my data source from a custom API call. Where your data comes from doesn't actually matter. It can come from your database, a different plugin element, um, as long as you're working with a list. So in my case, I have a list of countries. Uh, I'm also sorting my countries by their name so that they can show alphabetically. But really, this is where it begins. Once you have your list, we're going to restrict which items in that list we're actually going to show. So we're going to tell Bubble, start my list from a particular index in the overall list, items from a certain number, and then end the list a certain number of items after that, right? Items until. So items from will start it, items until will end it. If we look at my preview here, items from is gonna be 101, right? In my overall list of 250, I'm on this page, and so I want to start with item number 101, and I want to end that list 10 items after that. So Iceland is item number one, India is item number two, Indonesia is number three, all the way to item number 10, because that's what the user asked for. And that's gonna end us here with the Ivory Coast, okay? Items from is this index, items until is just how many items after that you want to include. So that's gonna be this number here, 10. Items until is not going to be the index of your last item on that page, okay? So if I open up my, uh, my element here where I have my custom state, it is my group main is my element. You can see here is a custom state that I have called first in page. This is just a number and you can see right now it's 101. That is the first item in this page that we're looking at right now. Um, the items until is just going to pull from the drop down, so I don't need another custom state for that. Uh, you'll also notice I have three other custom states here. The selected page that we're currently on, so we can see we're on page 11. The total count for my overall list, in my case, it's always just gonna be the same number, 250, because I'm not changing that final result. However, if you're building a search feature, for example, that total count may change, right? How many uh, overall results do you have that you know the user wants to go through? This number might change, and I'll show you in the workflows in just a second where you can update that. And then I'm also keeping track of the total number of pages based on the number of items I'm looking at per page. So if I'm seeing 10 items per page, I have a total of 250, that gives me 25 pages. This is helpful to have in a custom state so that we 
can do a little bit of math to show the user here, you know, which, uh, which range we're looking at currently uh, with this page that we're on. Okay, so we're looking at four custom states that are going to drive all of this behavior here. My group where those states live is this one right here, group main. Open up the uh, element inspector. You can see there are the four states. They're all numbers. First in page, selected page, total count, and total pages. So let's go back to the repeating group. I have my list. Items from is my group main's first in page, right? That's the starting point. For example, Iceland is number 101. Items until the drop downs value. So if I'm looking at five items at, time, at a time, it's going to be Iceland to four more items, right? We're going to include the first item in that, in that five there. So items until the drop downs value. Okay. And so if we change the first in page or we change the drop down, it changes the list that we're looking at. It dynamically powers what we're seeing here. Okay, real quick here. If you're finding this helpful, we have so much more to teach you over in our free extended workshop at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop, where we'll guide you through our four phased approach for going from idea to app. So if you're looking for a start to finish guide, go ahead and register for that workshop right after this video. You'll get immediate access. For now, let's get back to our lesson. Now I want to move into the workflows next. Anything the user can interact with that can change the list is going to trigger a workflow of some kind to update these custom state values. Whether they're changing the drop down, they're clicking any of these buttons, or changing the page that they want to jump to. So I'm going to go over to the workflows here. And you're going to see that there is a workflow event for all of those items that the user can interact with. We have the first page button, the last page button, previous, next. We have the drop down uh, for the page that they want to jump to. We have the drop down for the page size. Do they want to see five at a time, 10 at a time? And we also have one that kicks us off when we first load the page. All of these workflows, if you look over here on the right hand side, every single one of these workflows are doing the exact same thing. There's no difference here with these buttons and these two drop downs. They're all triggering a custom event that I've called update page. Okay, my custom event is right here in green. Okay, so that I don't have to duplicate my work. I don't have, uh, you know, any more potential for error. They are all going to funnel into this exact same flow here, which ultimately is going to update three of our four custom states. Okay, so this way it's very consistent no matter what they interact with. Ultimately, it's all going to come back here to recalculate everything. We're also going to reset uh, our navigation group. That is, I'm going to show you here. That's our group down at the bottom that holds all of these buttons because uh, we want to make sure that this drop down is always in sync with the custom state called selected page. Notice that this uh, default value here is pointing to that custom state. I'll come back to the setup for this drop down in just a moment. Let's go back to our workflows. Okay, so again, all of these buttons and drop downs are triggering our custom event that I've called update page. When the page is loaded, this is only doing one extra thing. Um, it is also going to trigger the custom event, but it's also going to define that total count. Now, this is the case for my example because I know that total count is never going to change. So I set it the one time I'm doing a separate custom API call and I'm just counting the number of items. But if yours is going to change based on a uh, search behavior that the user is interacting with, this custom state may actually be a part of the custom event as well. And you may not even need a, a, a workflow to run when the page is loaded. Okay, so it's just going to depend on your use case and your flow. So let's take a look at this update page custom event. If you've never created a custom event before, you'll want to click on new workflow. You'll go to custom and right here, create a custom event, right? That'll get you started. I'm going to delete this here. And on mine, I have uh, named it update page. I also created a parameter here. I just called it number um, here. That's the name of it, but it is a type number. Uh, so that whenever this custom event is triggered, we're going to pass a page number to it. This is the page number that the user wants to go to. So the number that was passed in when the page was first loaded compared to the number that was passed in when I switched this to 10 items per page, that was the exact same. We're still on page one. However, if I move over to page seven, the number seven is what gets passed in because that is a number that can change our calculations for some of the other custom states. So this event needs to receive that number. So for example, from the pages loaded, if we look at the trigger action, you can see we're passing in page one because that's where we want to start when the page is first loaded. If I click on the next button, I'm going to pass in whatever the selected page is plus one. If I go to previous, I'm going to pass in the selected page minus one. For the first page, I'm just going to pass in one again. And for the last page, 
I'm going to go to the group mains total number of pages. So the selected page and the total number of pages, those are states that we're updating from previous runs with changing all of this. Okay, so I'm going to take you now into this action here that manipulates these custom state values. So the selected page is the number that we passed in, right? If I click on next, I'm currently on one. One plus one is going to give me two. That is now my new selected page. If I'm on page two and I want to go back one page, two minus one is going to give me one. So now my selected page is number one, right? And again, group main's selected page is the default value of our dropdown that we have here uh, to always stay in sync. You know, if the user is just using the buttons, we want to make sure this dropdown updates as well uh, for that default value. Okay, so the next custom state is the first in page. Now this one requires a little bit of math to calculate because the user is in control of how many items they see at any given time. So for example, uh, let me go to five items at a time. And if I go to page two, the first item in the page is item number six, right? In the overall list of 250. However, if I wanna show 10 items at a time, and then I go to page two, well, the first item in this list on page two is item number 11. Okay, so what we're trying to calculate is this number right here, six or 11, whatever it might be. So here's our formula. We're gonna take the page number that we're passing in, right, the page we want to be on, minus one times the drop down page sizes value. So if they wanna see five at a time, 10 at a time, whatever that is, and then plus one. Okay, one more time. The page number that we're going to, minus one times the size value, plus one. Okay, so let's actually look at this here. If I want to go to uh, page three from page two, okay? So page three, three is our first number, right? Three minus one gives us two. Two times 10 gives us 20, plus one is 21. So now we're at the first in page. I know maybe you weren't expecting to have a little bit of a formula like this in here, but it's incredibly consistent and allows you to stay really flexible with um, the overall page size and allowing the user to really jump around however they want, okay? So really, that is honestly the most complicated formula. It's not that bad uh, for this particular custom event. The total pages is gonna be the group main's total count. Okay, so total count was defined at the very beginning for us here when the page is loaded. Um, we just get a full list of the, the, the total number of items. In my case, it's 250. Okay, so again, our total pages is whatever that total count is divided by the uh, page size. So if I have 250 divided by 10 uh, items at a time, then I'm going to have 25 pages total. Now, keep in mind that if you have an odd number of uh, total results, let's say you had 253 items, this divided by your page size is not going to divide evenly. So that's why we have this ceiling operator here following the division so that your result can actually be rounded to the next integer up. So let's say that this division gives you 12.4. It's actually going to change it to 13 because 13 is the next integer after 12. It doesn't matter what uh, the value is after the decimal whether it's 12.1 or 12.9, it's the ceiling is always going to take you to the next integer. And just for your information, there's an opposite operator to go down uh, called floor. So if you have 12.1, it'll take you down to 12 or 12.9, it'll still take you down to 12. Okay, so ceiling and floor. In our case, we want to use ceiling because if we have an uneven division here, we want to make sure that there is one more page at the very end to include those last few items that may not fill the page, but we still need to be able to see them. So we want to include that, that last number. All right, so now that we know how our custom states are being defined here, we're gonna look at uh, how they're being referenced in the design. So for this text here, this is where I'm showing 21 through 30 of 250, right? Showing the first in page to the number of items after that that they wanna see of our total list. This is how we're displaying that uh, value. So showing the group mains first in page, and then I just typed in a hyphen, and then the end of the list is the group mains first in page plus the value, the, the page size value minus one. So if we have 21 plus 10, that's 31, minus one gives us 30. Okay, so that's how, with the page that we're currently on, that's how we get this number there, okay? Um, of, and then I just go to my total count uh, custom state. That's a separate custom state, no more math that needs to happen there. Now, I happen to also be showing the specific index for that item uh, relative to the overall list. So we're not seeing one, two, three here. We're seeing 21, 22, 23, because we're on page three of the overall list. So this value here, we have to calculate. 
From Bubbles' perspective, if you were to go to the current cells index within this row here, it's going to give you number one. And this one here will give you number two, three, four, because that's how many, there's only 10 rows that are showing. And so Bubbles going to say, okay, row number one is index number one, row number two is index number two. Uh, but we know that this is not, you know, just the first 10 of the overall list. This is actually items number 21 through 30. So we have to calculate that. So I'm taking again, the first in the page plus the cells index minus one, okay? First in page plus cells index minus one. Okay, so let me show you here with the inspector. Let's go to this value here where it says 21. I'm gonna to go to this text and evaluate. Here's our formula again. First in page is 21. We can see that right there. The current cells index is gonna be number one. And then if I subtract one, we get 21. So for the first in page, it's really just gonna be the same number. Let's go to number 25 here, okay? First in page, 21, right? That's the first in the page that we're looking at plus the cells index, okay, for Bermuda, it's an index number five of this repeating group that we're looking at right now of 10 rows. So 21 plus five gives us 26, and then subtract one, we're left with 25. And so that's the number that we see there for that cell. Okay, so a little bit of a calculation uh, to display that if you wanted to show that to your user. Now the last piece here is this drop down for the user to jump around uh, to a specific page. You don't have to use a drop down for this. You can also use a repeating group that's horizontal to actually show the different numbers. I think in terms of design, it's really just gonna depend on how big your list could be. Um, you know, it could be more cumbersome to go through a big drop down like this, uh, or it could be more cumbersome to have to page through a separate repeating group that has lots of page numbers, you know, to show at one time. So it's really up to uh, the nature of the content that you're working with. So I've got a drop down here so I can see my full list in a scrolling element. So I'm not having to worry about the responsiveness of these elements here. So my data source for this particular dropdown is actually just a list of numbers. And I'm generating that list with the help of a plugin. This is coming from our toolbox plugin. It's a free plugin. This comes with an element called list of numbers. Okay, so that element I've added to my design here. You can see right there this little, uh, this little visual element here called list of numbers. If you go to your assets list on the left, search for list of numbers, make sure that that plugin is installed. And then that's what I've added here. Now the user's not actually gonna see this little square here, but it does need to be here so that it works. And the only thing you need to do is to define your list that it generates. Where do you want the list to start? In our case, we always wanna start with one, right? We want to always present one through a certain number of pages. And then we want the list to end our length of the list with the group mains total pages. This is our custom state, the total number of pages. Remember, that's one of the custom states that we're calculating based on the number of items we wanna see per page and based on our total results. So given that uh, we have 10 per page and there's 250 results, that gives us 25 pages. If we wanna show uh, 50 items per page for 250 results, that gives us fewer pages, five, so our list of numbers is a lot smaller. Okay, so the plugin is actually generating that, that literal list, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you can see the increment is one, we're not skipping any numbers. This is generating that list, and so therefore this element, list of numbers, is our data source for this dropdown. The type of choices is number, the source is our list of numbers list, right here, and then the caption is just gonna be the current option. It's literally the number that is there for that list item. And we're gonna to default to the selected page. This is why it's really important after you make an adjustment, you change the dropdown, you click on any of the buttons, we have, as a part of the custom event, resetting this group so that if the user changed the page themselves, it always reverts back to the default value to show the custom state value instead, because if the user goes back to using buttons, the dropdown will still update automatically and it'll stay in sync. Once you uh, interact with an input, Bubble ignores the default value. You'd have to reset it. So that's why we wanna reset it every single time. Okay, so that is the data source for that. And you, you, because the list of numbers is dynamically looking at the full length of lists uh, from that custom state, this will also change as well. So this is our highly flexible system for moving through a big list of items in Bubble. All right, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to register for that free extended training over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. You'll get immediate access as soon as you register. And the link for that is in the description below. Okay, happy building.